Note to self, S is a letter and not a number. Before the Singing Kettle began producing live stage shows for the home video market, the group had their own television series produced by BBC Scotland between 1989 and 1993, soon after released on video. The first three videos were no doubt popular with the families, but these days they are nothing to write home about. The episodes were just 10 minute segments of Scylla and Artie singing songs to kids in front of a basic background with virtually no plot included. The releases are pretty outdated by today's standards, especially when you look at future Singing Kettle releases. Altogether, five TV series were commissioned, two of which I owned. The first TV video for me was Singing Kettle Christmas Crackers, released in 1992. It's a very basic release with one obvious twist. It has a Christmas theme, but how does it hold up? Truth be told, I actually consider this to be the worst Singing Kettle video I have ever owned, for two reasons. Reason number one, the video release is too short. The first three videos each ran for about one hour. This release runs at only 42 minutes, only 29 of which involve the usual stage show, during which the songs are incredibly brief. This is hardly going to hold the kids for that long. Be careful, you might blink and miss William Moore, the alter egos of Scylla and Artie. Reason number two. Jesus Christ on a tree, this video is repetitive. The main theme song for the show is called Christmas Crackers. If you watch this show, you are going to hear that song a lot. You watch this, you're going to hear that song eight times. If this were the only Christmas singing kettle home video, I could probably praise it more. But unfortunately, there are more worthwhile releases out there. The first one that comes to mind is Singing Kettle Christmas Party from 1996. It is by far a more memorable release. It features the first video appearance of Jane, it has a longer running time, and features more Christmas songs with zero repeats. You compare them both, and Christmas Party wins overall. It's not that Crackers is a bad release, it's just inferior to nearly everything that comes after. I'd only recommend this to the hardcore fans that want to own everything. The songs are short, but still decent, and Scylla, Artie and Gary have incredible chemistry together, on or off stage. Remember to give a smile, clap your hands, and sing, 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 sing along. Come on, we better go. Okay. The next year, out comes Adventures in Kettleland. This was my only singing kettle release that I never actually kept at my house. This resided at Loch Gelly for my childhood. It's another TV series, basic 10 minute episodes, a few songs in each, only this time there's an element of plot in each episode. They're stranded on a deserted island, they're in the woods for a picnic, they're on a farm, they're in New York, I mean Kettle City. There's actually something going on. Now, I've criticised the past TV shows for being bland and irrelevant in the 21st century. No doubt I feel the same about this release. And the answer couldn't be farther from the truth. I actually like this one. It is actually really good and is aged remarkably well when compared to everything before it. Some of the songs in this are surprisingly better than I remember. I'd actually say this video has the best version of the song Old MacDonald that I have ever heard. Which is a truly sad thing for a 24 year old to see on the internet. What am I doing with my life? So would I recommend this release? Oh my god yes. This is without a doubt the best video release pre-1995. The music is great and the group charm is outstanding. Now there's one more video I'd like to cover today. It's a big one. It's an iconic one. It's one of the first videos I ever owned. 
let's look at Scene Kit World Tour. This one is where the group made a transition from a TV series to a live stage recording. There had been live singing kill shows since 1989, but this was the first show actually recorded for home video, all the way back in 1994. It's still split into 15 minute segments, but it feels more like a stage show compared to the last releases. So how does it hold up? Yes, it's okay. Okay, where do I start? Well, for one thing, it introduces a new theme song, one that will stick with the show for the next 20 years. You like it? Good, because you're going to hear it a lot in this video, because we're going to France, Egypt, Australia, China, and back to America, and that jingle will be there to introduce every single goddamn country. Not to mention an extra round at the end to promote the now closed St. Kel shop. The video's longer than everything before it. 81 minutes long, with each segment featuring a different country in the world tour each featuring three or four songs which may or may not relate to the location. I'm sure it's an iconic release, but does that make it super good? Not particularly. It won't beat anything after it, and it certainly doesn't beat Adventures in Kettleland. The songs on this one really don't stick out as well as the last videos. It also has the worst William Moss segment I have ever seen. Honestly, this video succeeds more in the chemistry between the group members as well as the educational geographic aspect in the show. If I had to point out two parts in this video to support this argument, I'd refer to the French portion where Scylla and Artie teach French vocabulary using an oversized phrase book. I'd also refer to Australia where Scylla suffers some mishaps with a boomerang. She throws it one way and it comes from behind and smacks her in the back, which eventually leads her to throw away a singing kettle. To be fair, if you were being abused by a rogue boomerang, you'd throw things too. So is this one worthy? Uh, I guess. Like I said, it won't be anything released after this one, but if you like the singing kettle and you want to educate your kids, and you have a functional VCR in this day and age, I suppose you can't go wrong with this one. On the other hand, I'd argue best loved sing-along songs pick the best songs from the release. The songs really aren't truly really memorable in World Tour. So overall, for these three videos, Adventures in Kettleland wins by a landslide. This is the only one I would truly recommend. And it's the only one I don't own anymore. Of course. It was left in my grandmother's house, and I'm assuming she sold the video when she rid herself of her VCR around 2007, so I was never able to retrieve it. There was, however, one video I was able to recover in time. Or should I say, there were two videos.